What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Lumsden Motorsports Garage. I'm Wade Lumsden. Chris Lumsden. <laughs> and uh, we are working on, well, lots of stuff today, but don't really have a whole lot of time to chat about it. Let's get to work. So first thing you're going to notice here, engine is off the stand. Um, we got it all wrapped up nice and pretty in the back of my truck over here. And uh, we got some valve covers on it and uh, yeah, all of that happy stuff. Um, and now Tiz has his hobby stock street stock motor. What do you think? I think I got a lot of work to do when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is currently Wednesday. Um, he's got to take it home um, and we race Friday so we race in two days and of course we both have day jobs so we'll see what happens hopefully you're gonna make it I'm gonna be mad if he doesn't yeah well <laughs> should be in tomorrow Ho yeah hopefully running tomorrow if not I'm getting off early Friday to just to make it run yeah we're we're still in the search for a 500 CFM uh, 4412 carburetor uh gas i had an alcohol i have an alcohol one but not one for gas so yeah he's got lots to do but hey it's here he's gonna be able to go home and do that and then really the bulk of our video today is gonna be me scrambling on this nonsense trying to get the crate motor in transmission whole bunch of other stuff we got lots of time uh lots of stuff to do no time to do it in doesn't that seem like it's the usual story well, camera died there. I'm, uh, it's probably a good thing because then my brother went off on a tangent about how it looks like a tornado went off in my garage. So, <sighs> yeah. Anyways, he is uh, gone. Took my truck, took the motor. Uh, hopefully, we'll get the truck back tomorrow. Um, and he's going to start his install process. Uh, he was saying that most likely he'll get it unloaded and stuff tonight and he he won't be able to start um putting the motor in until uh, uh tomorrow evening so thursday so it looks like he's going to be a you know one nighter <laughs> hopefully uh he'll get it done before we race friday night um he's still looking for a carburetor and other stuff too uh but hopefully hopefully you know um for me i still have lots of chaos to clean up here um but i think i'm gonna leave the crazy mess over here for now um yeah that kind of got got out of hand i don't normally i don't normally get that crazy when i'm i'm doing stuff but i guess being in a hurry and trying to keep up with video and all that stuff i i got super messy um but i'm gonna start on crate motor stuff tonight i gotta get as far as i possibly can um we are all sealed up all of our wonderful imca seals here uh that is one of the things about crate motors somebody suggested in one of my other videos i go over real quick the benefits and downfalls uh to running a crate engine um quickly let's do uh benefits to running a crate crate engine 604 crate in the imca modifieds um it is aluminum heads um so you get a weight reduction in the front end of your car because of those aluminum heads um, it also has a hydraulic roller cam. You're not allowed to run a roller cam in uh, open motors, but this is a hydraulic roller. Uh, also, like it seems that set up across the board, um, many people, I would say the majority of modified guys are running 604 crates anymore. So, um, you know, when you go start asking people what gears they run in places and things like that, um, it's usually pretty standard across the board because they're all running 
uh, pretty much the same engine package, right? Uh, but when I ask with my, my open motor, um, I get a wide range because, you know, they don't know if I spin my motor up to 7,800 RPM or if I keep it down at 62 or, you know, things like that. So um, that's another benefit of that whole setup thing. Um, and then another benefit is 604 crate motors get to run a spoiler um, in the back of the car. So they get... Uh, a little bit more of a aerodynamic advantage. Um, you get that air over the top of your car, hit that ba hit the back of that spoiler and helps uh, put some down force. Granted, it's not very big. Um, it's it's one or two inches or something like that. I can't I don't remember right now off the top of my head because again, I don't run a crate. Um, so a little bit of an aerodynamic advantage, some weight savings uh, plus, I guess uh, the other way you can look at it is compared to most open motors, it doesn't quite have the horsepower. It still does pretty good, um, but it doesn't quite have the horsepower that uh, a lot of open motor guys um, have. So to a lot of guys that run open motors, they feel like they're flat footing with the crate motor and um, then they're just driving. So uh, takes away some of that, that need to think um, and need to use the uh, God installed traction control, that thing right there. Um, but you know, that's, that's all hearsay, right? That's not necessarily uh, the actual fact. I, who knows, I might get in this thing and be completely wowed with the power that it has. I, deep down inside I don't think that's going to be the case but <laughs> that could be the case I don't know um, so a little less horsepower especially on dry slick stuff that usually performs better slightly less horsepower better aerodynamics weight savings in the front that usually helps so um, those are benefits disadvantage um, disadvantage is you're limited on your horsepower you get what you get here um, you can't open this up at all which is another disadvantage if something happens inside this engine i cannot do anything about it um, i've been to races before where guys with crate motors they broke a rocker arm and it spit the push rod and spit the lifter they can't open it up to fix it open motor guy i'd yank that intake right off <laughs> put a, you know uh, see if I can get that lifter to go back in there or put a new lifter in and, and get it all put back together and, and go race, you know, um, so Huge disadvantage if anything happens to the engine um, underneath one of these sealed bolts um, Which is pretty much everything that's the pan the heads the intake uh, Timing chain cover like you cannot get into this thing uh, Without breaking the rules, right? Um, that's uh, that's the disadvantage you can't you can't repair anything but i don't know i feel like it's a toss-up uh you hear different things about crate motors um you hear guys say that you know they're bulletproof i've got 185 nights on mine and it's great and then you got other guys that put five nights on them and they blow up so yeah i, I guess it depends on how they're maintaining their motors and the if they're using the proper oils and and you know, good maintenance program, or if they're abusing the crap out of them, I, you know, who's to say? Uh, I can't give you my honest opinion on them other than I've been an open motor guy my whole life. Um, and I believe that the crate motor, the crate motor to me takes away a little bit of the, um, the ingenuity of the guy who likes to to build his motors and, and build his race cars and stuff like that. I think this is an absolute fantastic package for people that want to get into a car. You know, they want to buy their chassis, buy a motor, slap it all together super easy, you know. Um, I, I don't know. There's, there's lots of different ways to look at it. I might like this thing. I, I, I might surprise myself. Who knows? But that's enough uh, talking about it. 
Um, oh, I guess the other, the other, is there another disadvantage to this thing? Uh, I don't know. Um, I guess the other disadvantage is because you're running the exact same motors engine as everybody else. Um, it, some of the fine detail stuff really matters. Like, are you going to, are you gonna uh, clock your plugs, right? Are you gonna clock them to where they're um, facing the perfect direction for uh, the best spark and ignition for your fuel? Are you gonna do that? Are you gonna change your valve, um, uh, valve springs every three races? Are you, um, are you gonna run a carburetor spacer or not run a carburetor spacer? Are you going to run the specific 604 crate engine uh, better flow um, headers and exhaust, right? Like there's so many things out there that you can spend extra money on to get a little bit more out of your crate engine um, that you can do that. But then I think that goes back to you know, kind of the open motor thing where people talk about racing cubic dollar you're almost racing cubic dollar with this as well because if you if you can spend the extra money on a dynode engine um, with your carburetor with the specific exhaust with the specific you know the specific and the specific and the specific and the specific um, then you're gonna be doing great right you're gonna be you're gonna have a top of the line package and uh, you're gonna get the most out of your engine but if you're me um, I'm not gonna go out and buy another you know four or five hundred dollar set of headers because i have a set of headers granted it's not the set of headers that match to a 604 um you know if i have my competition carburation uh open motor carburetor right there um which could be too much carburetor and probably is too much carburetor for the 604 crate so am i going to go out and buy another carburetor or take that in and and get it redone that's that's more money right um thank goodness i get to borrow one that was actually on a 604 so um it's for somebody starting out has absolutely nothing and you got to buy all that stuff once anyways crate motor might be a great package for you for somebody who's got stuff and, and and likes to be able to mix and match from a whole bunch of other things that he has, you know, laying around and and that whole thing, Crate Motor's probably not the way to go for you. So I don't know. Those are just some thoughts on it. I am I am in no way I am in no way gonna tell you one way or the other, because again, I haven't run a 604 before. Like I said, I might be surprised. Um but with all that general stuff being said, I have got to get my butt to work. Um, I decided that I wasn't going to uh, trash my whole pulley setup that I have for my um, 383. And instead I was gonna get a new pulley system uh, for this. So I, I bought a 604 specific uh, set of pulleys and um, pump. Uh, power steering pump and we're gonna put all that stuff on I got to get a transmission shoved in um, mine's still sitting down there and starter and all of that happy stuff um, right now I will talk through here real quick I mentioned something about um, needing to figure out my distributor issue um, this is this is an MSD um, that has an external box um, an external coil and all that stuff. That's the common thing that most guys are running with these 604s. Uh, I run an ETI distributor, right? Um, but you should, with the hydraulic roller cam, you should be running um, a, a specific gear. Uh, the bottom of this one is, uh, is brass or um, so yeah, this has a uh, brass gear in it. Um, and I don't know how to use that. I need to um, install a box, install a coil, install all of that happy stuff. Uh, luckily, a friend of mine, uh, Rusty, he had one that is hydraulic roller uh, compatible. 
This one here, it's got a melanized gear, which is supposedly compatible. Um, so I think I'm gonna use that. It's easier for me to just use my setup and tap in my, um, my soft touch rev limiter than it is to install the box and the switches and the wires and all that stuff. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, but uh, yeah, the reason why you're wanting to use brass or the proper uh, gear is you would rather have the gear wear out on the distributor than the gear wear out on the camshaft, right? So um, make sure you're using something compatible. I think there's what a, a cast iron and I think they have a composite one as well. Um, if you look it up online, there's usually a chart on what you should be using with what type of cam, uh, what's compatible and all that other happy stuff. But I mean, if you're in a, if you're in a tough spot, um, and you need to use something for one race or two races, I guess you can use whatever you want, <laughs> but, um, to make it work so uh, but that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use that uh, DUI distributor um, that I got from Rusty and uh, should be good to go I'm gonna have to tap into it again for my rev limiter um, but that's that's no big deal and uh, go from there so um, I was told from Mickey who put this away who you know tighten put this away uh, before I bought it um, that the cylinders are full of Marvel's mystery oil um, so I'm gonna pull the spark plugs out I'm gonna get I'm gonna start getting everything mounted here guys so um, lots to do and it's not getting done with me sitting here talking about it so uh, yeah time to get to work one more thing on that that negatives of a 604 crate i just thought about um when something does happen to your engine you have to send it off to get fixed you have to send it to a um a certified shop machine shop um that can seal it that's a I, that's imca approved to put the seals and the imca stamps on um yeah I guess the other downs, one more downside is there's like tons and tons and tons of stuff out there to help you build a cheating 604, even with 602 crates. Um, you can buy a camshaft that's different, um, but still meets the lift specs that's within tech there, but it's not the same like lobe center and um, things like that. So. Yeah, there's, there's some things you could do internally that if you know a guy, I guess, you could get all that stuff done. That is that is not my deal. Um, I want no part of that. So uh, <laughs> um, this is, uh, yeah, this is, this is a used 604 crate. Um, I'm getting it from somebody I trust. Uh, he got it from somebody it's only got 10 races on it he got it from somebody who who bought it brand new um so we're we're trusting that and trusting that nothing nothing's been done to it internally um that's the only thing that that super sucks about buying a used 604 crate you don't know if somebody has put fake seals on it has opened it up has has you know um, slip the machine shop guy a couple extra thousand or whatever to to put in cheating stuff uh, to help them win races um, and then they only show up to races that that never pull motors and never tear your engine down right so I mean those are those are things to think about um, when you buy a used crate and that's kind of another downside is um, to me it's like it's almost like gun laws and the fact that it only keeps the honest people honest. Yeah, it's just kind of the way it is. So, all right. Off of that subject, time to get to work. <laughs>
Alrighty, well, the camera died while I was working. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but uh, I did make some headway. I got my distributor installed, uh, alternator, power steering pump, pulley set, fan, um, starters in, uh, transmissions in. We're doing pretty good. I uh, ran into a handful of little issues, but um, overcame them. There are gonna be a handful of things that I need to buy because they're either um, still with the 383 or um, I just didn't have them before. So um, making myself a list. It is currently uh, Wednesday night or rather Thursday morning now. Yeah, Thursday morning. Um, and we race uh, Friday, so I have tomorrow or today, whatever you want to call it, uh, to get finished up. Yeah, so I need a uh, port back there um, to hook up my oil pressure line. I'm also going to need um, an adapter for my temperature gauge, and I also need the sending unit uh, to my dummy light. Uh, I'm going to need to get another one of those because that's currently still in the intake manifold of the 383. That's at the machine shop. So <laughs> um, I got, still got to hook up my power steering lines and whatnot. Uh, I got to get my fuel pump on uh, headers. I need uh, header gaskets. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take a minute here to look and make sure there's nothing else that I'm gonna need because uh, I'm probably gonna have one shot after work tomorrow to uh, run to Summit and buy the stuff that I need and come home and hopefully get everything together in time. So yeah, ooh, spade, spade connectors, the little, uh, um, these connectors right here, right here. They allow a spade connector to go in so it splices in and then this allows the spade connector to go in. Uh, that's for the um, rev limiter. So yeah, all of that happy stuff. Uh, <laughs> I need to get a restrictor and a thermostat housing. Um, so that's gonna be a thing. Yeah. The longer I stand here and look at it, the longer the list gets. So, <laughs> oh boy. All right, and that's that's hoping that we don't run into any issues Thursday night. Um, you know, so. All right, I'm gonna leave you guys here. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Any questions, comments, concerns down below. Uh, Lumsden Motorsports Facebook page, and. Uh, yeah, wish me luck. Sheesh, my brother's in a tight spot too, so wish both of us luck, I guess. Uh, hopefully we can get done in time and go race Friday and Saturday. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you next video.